Welcome to Electra Online, and now we're going to talk about the sunspot cycle. Most people that know something about the sunspot cycle do realize that the sun cycle goes through about 11 year cycles. In other words, there are periods where there's a lot of sunspots on the surface of the sun, and then there's periods where there's almost none to actually, actually none, no sunspots at all. And the time to go from one maximum to the next maximum is roughly 11 years. Sometimes it's 12 years, sometimes it's 10 years. It's roughly about 11 years. Same from one minimum to the next. The period there is about 11 years as well. And again, that comes due to the uh, differential rotation of the sun. As the sun rotates faster near the equator versus near higher and lower latitudes, the magnetic field lines that normally would just span straight across like that all get twisted up. Eventually, they start looking like this, and then they start twisting to the point where they started coming out of the surface of the sun. Wherever they, the magnetic field lines break through the surface of the sun, you'll have a sunspot at the entry point and where it leaves. And so you'll have a north pole at the one sunspot and a south pole at the other sunspot. And notice that the north hemisphere, the order will be different from the sun hemisphere. Now, it goes through an 11-year cycle. The sun becomes extremely active towards the end when you have a maximum number of sunspots on the sun. There's all kinds of solar flares and coronal mass ejections and prominences, so a lot of activity on the sun. And then all of a sudden, the whole caboodle, the whole magnetic field lines kind of untwists itself, uncloses itself, goes back to the normal state. But the only difference is that 11 years later, when the, when the magnetic field resets itself, then the magnetic South Pole is now at the north, and the magnetic North Pole is now at the south. And so when the new sunspots begin to appear, the orientation then changes. This will be south and north, this will be south and north for the leading to the trailing sunspots, and on the Southern Hemisphere it will be north-south and north-south, instead of south-north-south-north. So this becomes the magnetic North Pole, and this becomes the magnetic South Pole. And it goes through an 11-year cycle where more and more sunspots begin to appear on the surface. And then again, when it all gets twisted up, all of a sudden the whole magnetic field uh, system resets itself, uncloses itself, and goes back to the where it was before with the North Pole at the north and the South Pole at the south. And it goes again through an 11-year cycle like that. So the polarity of magnetic field in the sun does change. And as we've learned, the same thing happens to the Earth, except in 11, instead of 11-year cycles on the Earth, it probably the cycles are more in the order of hundreds of thousands of years. And it turns out, turns out that we're probably actually close to reversal of magnetic field on the Earth, and we'll have to look a little bit more at that as well. Another really interesting part about sunspots is when they first begin to appear, so when we have a minimum with no sunspots, or virtually no sunspots, when sunspots begin to appear, they appear at about 30 degrees north of the equator and 30 degrees south of the equator. And as then the years go by into the cycle, they start appearing in greater numbers and also closer and closer and closer to the equator. And towards the end of the solar cycle, when the maximum number of solar uh, sunspots begin to occur, they occur very near close to the equator until all of a sudden it stops. We have a minimum period again, and then we start resetting and new sunspots begin to occur about 30 degrees north, about 30 degrees south, and as we go through the next cycle, they become closer and closer and closer to the equator, where after 11 years, they're very close to the equator again, until we get to a new minimum, and then they start all over again, just like before. And it goes through cycle after cycle after cycle like that. With 11, every 11 years, the cycle simply reverses the orientation of the magnetic field. What we have discovered, though, that every cycle is somewhat different from the previous one. They're all about 11 years long. Sometimes they're 10, sometimes they're 12 years long. They're all about 11 years long. But what we've seen in the past, after we start observing sunspots, that there's periods in which the maximum has far fewer sunspots than in other periods. We do know in one case, where at the end of the 17th century and the beginning of the 18th century during that period, which is now known as the Maunders Minimum, there are almost no sunspots on, sunspots on the sun for about 50 or more years. Even during the maximum part of the cycle, there are almost no sunspots visible. You may say, well, that was so long ago, were they even looking at sunspots? But sure enough, ever since the invention of the telescope, and Galileo discovering sunspots, they have been keeping track of those, and they did notice there were very few sunspots during that time. And then the number began to increase, and then between 1820 and 1850, the sunspot maximum had far fewer sunspots in it again, then it began to increase again, and then the early part of the 20th century, same thing in 1910, 1920, 
far fewer sunspots, and then we had a lot of solar activity, as we call it, with lots of sunspots. And what's interesting is in the minimum of 2008, we had another minimum in 2008, they saw the fewest sunspots during that period since 1913, which was in this area right here. So, is there some connection to the number of sunspots and what happens on the Earth? And there seems to be a belief that there's a correlation between the climate on the Earth and the number of sunspots, because the number of sunspots on the Sun does correlate with the amount of solar activity and perhaps with the amount of energy that we receive from the Sun. It is known that during this period of, uh, of uh, time that it was extremely cold on the Earth. That was during the Little Ice Age, and so we're wondering if the mountain minimum had some contribution to the fact that we had a period of extreme cold. We also know that in the early part of the 19th century, between 1800 and 1850, it was very, very cold. Rivers used to freeze up, glaciers were advancing, very cold, and again, a potential correlation between the solar activity and the cold. 1850 pretty well spelled the end of the Little Ice Age, which is also when the solar activity took a, a big increase. We know that in the early part of the, 19th, of the 20th century, it was rather cold again, and again, it correlated to lower solar activity. But again, we, we're not sure if there's a strong correlation or just a weak correlation. Just an interesting observation that the solar activity does seem to change over time. The sun is not as constant as we would probably like. And so there may be some influence on the climate based on the solar activity and the cycle, the way the cycles change from cycle to cycle. So we're now back into a period where we're reaching pretty well the maximum of a solar cycle. And so there's lots of sunspots on the sun, not as many as have been over many of the other maximums in recent, in recent cycles. But again, we're back to what we look, it looks like a fairly normal cycle with maybe a, far, a few fewer sunspots than we're used to. So that's what we mean by the solar cycle. So either you can call the solar cycle an 11 year cycle or a 22 year cycle, depending upon whether or not you feel that when you go from south to north and north to south, that that should be part of a whole cycle. So you can look at it as 11 years or 22 years, whatever you prefer.